ready? Good morning. Morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Kind of a little messed up. I was sitting there, I just jacking my gums, and Sean said, you ready? I said, yeah, sure. Always ready. Always be ready, right? Everybody enjoying this nice weather? Oh, yeah. Wow. I love this kind of winter. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Wait till tomorrow morning. Yeah. So, all right, let's do prayer requests. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it was like, boom. Yes, ma'am. I am bending my neck. Fantastic. Over six weeks. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I like to start off with praise. She ain't got quite high enough to kick the comment yet. That's good. Yes, ma'am. What was his name again? Corbin. Really? Excuse me. He had surgery on what? What was it? That's what I was thinking. He had. Okay, that's what confused me. So, with those polyps, I tested the polyps and. Mm-hmm. Really? And he's where? George, that's right. That's why I, I was thinking, I wonder how old he is, but yeah, 22. Golly. So, yes, we'll keep Corbin in our prayers, especially that situation there. Saw another one somewhere. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Really? What was his name? I can't remember. That's right. I remember he had a great name. Fantastic. Fantastic. I remember that. You remember that, Dale? I remember that now. Yes, ma'am. Continued healing, right? Galia's right shoulder. She's uh, patiently, patiently waiting in the next 21 days so she can see the doctor and possibly have an MRI. But uh, we're just praying over it right now that, you know, be recovered before she gets there. Yes, sir, Everett. Yes, sir. Yes, Dale. Yes, sir. Keep Roy in your prayers. He went to the interview today, and uh, you got to wait till what Monday for the call back so just the patience that that be good praise from that you said something while ago Eric well, about two things. okay you can yeah. do one at a time how's that I've got time okay yeah. one uh, our cousin went to the hospital I put it on the yeah prayer list right well they did a cat everything's coming back good heart's fine no teeth no surgery I've got to put him on my office what was his name? Um, Henry Walls. Henry, that's right. We all 
got stuff we going through. We all got storms and stuff, right? I read this this morning. This has been with me big time ever since. I've been preaching myself half the twice. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Mm-hmm. Now you go back when Jesus and the disciples were on the boat. He's down on the hose sleeping. Storm comes up. Disciples right up said, He just comes up and what does he say? Hey, be still. Be still. And then it brought me to mind the song that Neil always <coughs> does that uh, life is like a mountain railway. It says, uh, Never falter, never fail. Keep your. Uh, need an engineer that's strong. Never take your hand off the throttle. Keep your eyes on that rail. That rail is Jesus Christ. I think that has been with me all day, and I just feel like sharing it. But just never, never, ever quit. Never forget the word. Could you imagine what our life would be about or how it would be if we didn't have any trials and tribulations? We'd be <laughs> fat, lazy, unfaithful. Remember, that's what builds our faith. Uh, you hear it all the time with April, you know, she's not doing good. Keep her in your prayers. She's having bad days. But her faith, our faith, keep praying. Remember, the Bible says pray without ceasing. You know, we say that's the most we can do. Keep praying. Because God hears us. He knows it, but he hears us. We have to bring our petitions before him, right? Bring all your petitions before him. Also, yes, ma'am. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Miss Mary, right? Martha, Martha. So Miss Martha's talking about just the praise of with the cancer and hysterectomy and parks and everything, just keep growing our faith in God. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. You look very well tonight. You look like you're back to the old self. Mhm. Mm <laughs> mhm. Mm <clears throat> Vic, okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. The pain. Okay, yeah, kid. Do what? Okay. Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. Keep John on your prayers. Just so. I told y'all about a young man over in Halsey School named Caden. He has uh, leukemia. I saw the other day that uh, it was actually Sunday. His grandfather posted on, pa on Facebook that he was baptized. The preacher came to their house, and the preacher and his grandfather got to baptize him. So that was a, a great praise, you know, just no matter what, what's going on in our life, you know, just bring glory and honor to him and accepting him. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much, Lord, that you're an awesome God. The Lord, that you hear our praise, you hear our praise and our prayer requests. Lord, there's a lot of different praises on here. Lord, we thank you so much for recovering for the for the knee surgery. Lord, how you're you're taking hold of that. Lord, I know that we've got two women here that that's had knee surgery. So Lord, how you're touching each and every one of them. Lord, how you <laughs> you made our bodies so unique, and Lord, you can also heal our bodies. Lord, we lift up Corbin to you. Lord, I know. As a mother, far away from her son, I know she wants to be there, Lord, but we know that you're there with him. And, Lord, we pray for these results of this sinus uh, surgery, Lord. We pray for the recovery, Lord. We pray that what the doctor has found, Lord, that hmm, you've already touched him, Lord, that you'll, you'll be with him, Lord, that you've already taken care of this situation. Lord, we thank you so much for Dale's for eye surgery, Lord. How he's, he's gaining sight and you're, you're healing his eyes, Lord, and you're giving full sight. Lord, where he can see his wife, and Lord, just enjoy the beauty that you presented to him. And Lord, you create such a wonderful world. Lord, we thank you so much. Continue healing for her, Sherry, Lord. We know that she gives you all the praise, and Lord, we do. Lord, uh, <clears throat> all the issues that were that she was looking at, Lord, what the doctors first uh, diagnosed her with, and the, the treatment plan that they were looking into, Lord, that you've taken care of all of them. There's not one that you've left out. Lord, you've healed the, the heart murmur. Lord, you've healed the, everything that, that they, they diagnosed her with, Lord, that you've already put your hand upon her. Lord, I do lift up my wife. I lift up her, her shoulder to you, Lord. We know, we know that, uh, just like we talked about lunchtime, we had those pains. We have those symptoms sometimes, Lord, to, to bring us closer and stronger stronger with you. Lord, just like we heard from Paul, you know, the, the thorn in his flesh, Lord, it wasn't, to distract him, Lord, is to concentrate him more and get him focused on you. And, Lord, I, I thank you so much that that's what you do in each and every one of us. Because you never leave us. You never forsake us, Lord. That you just want us to be close by you. Lord, we lift up uh, Shane's dad to you, Lord. He's been diagnosed with cancer. Lord, we pray for him and that family. Lord, we pray for the the recovery, Lord, the healing that you're going to take, take place in this man's life. And, Lord, for the chaplain, you know, the, his sister's husband's past. And, Lord, same thing as Bob, Lord. We pray for those families. Lord, is dealing with a change, Lord. There's a, there'll be a loss there, Lord, but we know that your loss, well, our loss is, Lord, the gain that you have in, in your presence. But we do lift up those families to you. Lord, we lift up uh, Dennis for that Bob. See, Lord, we pray that everything comes out good. Lord, we just pray for those tests. Lord, we pray for the, the healing in his body, Lord. It's already been taken care of because of you. Lord, we lift up Roy for the interview that he went through today. Lord, we pray for the, that company, Lord, just to, to go through the candidates. Lord, we pray and lift up uh, Roy to you, the Lord, that he will be blessed with this position. And, Lord, like we prayed earlier, that, that position is going to soon come with a promotion. There's nothing we don't want to ask because there's nothing that you can't do for him. Lord, we thank you so much that you're there the whole time. And, Lord, with Henry's praise, Lord, with Martha's praise, uh, Martha's praise, Lord, give him glory and honor to you that you've been there, just like we heard from Ann, Lord. Huh, you just pick us back up and set us back together. Lord, you just put that joy back in our heart. But we do lift up uh, her grandson, Lord, as he's looking over these di two different assignments. Lord, we pray that the best assignment will come across to him, Lord, and he'll be able to, to hopefully go to Germany. And, Lord, that'd be a... a Hopefully a better and safer place, Lord, but we know that he's faithful to serve wherever you send him to. Lord, we pray for Vic. Lord, we pray for continued healing upon him, Lord, that uh, even when we, when people thought that he was leaning towards the end, Lord, you keep bringing him back, Lord. You, you're such an awesome God, and you heal our bodies. 
Lord, we pray for Jesse and Lord the kidney. Lord, we pray for him just to be recovered by you, Lord, that uh, you ease the pain. Lord, you just touch his body. And Lord, we look at John to you. Lord, I thank you so much for the blessing you've been to him and the blessing he's been to us. And Lord, we pray for it. these times, Lord, he just needs that extra strength from you. Lord, I lift up our country to you, Lord. I, I know sometimes we think things are going a little bit better, Lord, but Satan seems to get his foothold in the door. And Lord, we just want to stay focused on you. Lord, thank you so much for many blessings. Lord, for this this building you presented to us, Lord, and we can come and learn about you. And Lord, I pray that we just open our hearts to receive the message you have for us. And Lord, that we can use your resources to further your kingdom the way that you want us to. Lord, we lift up this praise band to you, Lord, with just bring glory and honor and praise to you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, y'all. Don't you love to say y'all? I'm so glad I live in Texas and say y'all. Not you guys or you all. It's y'all. That's right. That's right. Well, I was sitting there thinking about what uh, Eric had said. And, you know, um, a lot of people don't have hope. You can't have hope if you don't have something to hope in, right? And, uh, you know, you believe the Lord, you believe in the Lord, and you believe in God, and then he gives us faith. That belief gives us faith, and that faith is what gives us that eternal hope that we have. So we don't ever have to worry that we don't have hope, because we are not hopeless, and he is always faithful.
Oh, that was good. It's always good. I don't always say it, but it's always good. We were just talking about that out there. Uh, yeah, I don't. I love this church. <laughs> I love. I love that you're real. I love we can be real. We can be raw. We can be authentic. As long as there's not not any real little kids in here. There's one howler, so I'm gonna not be raw and real and authentic. But, <laughs> oh, so y'all, what's all the howling? <laughs> y'all, 
Y'all here? That's her. Uh, that's funny. It's that little Haley kid. Yeah. She's pretty like her mom and acts like her daddy. <laughs> but we were talking out there, and we, we were just, you know, she just got to laugh and cut up. And anyway, we were talking outside, and, and uh, we just love it. I just, I, I, it, it came up in a conversation. I'm not going to say how in case it was somebody. But I love, you know, uh, after a message or something, somebody will come up and they'll say, Man, man, that was good today. You sure were good today. And then they walk off, and I get to thinking, that's the first time all year you've told me that. So I sucked all the rest of the time. But I was at least this one time. And, uh, and if I got to know you real well, I've told some of them that. Really? So all the rest of the time it was crappy. But it was good this time. You know I ain't mean it like that preacher. It just spoke to me. You know, and that's all right. You know, all of it's good. It all comes from the Word. It all comes from the heart. It all comes from the Word. And it's Word-based. You're not going to have to wonder uh, is am I standing on a platform, a solid rock of Jesus Christ, when I deliver a message? I won't deliver a message unless I'm standing on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. I don't want to stand up there and, uh, and give a speech. I took speech in college, and, and uh, that's just memorizing something and regurgitating what, you, what you've already memorized. That, that ain't what this is about. What this is about is getting the gospel of Jesus Christ in your heart where it, the Holy Spirit can take that and he can bring back to your remembrance things that, that you've heard. And you can walk in that faith. So before I get ahead of myself, because uh, I will, uh, this is Christ my. So y'all know a week ago Sunday, now it was the New Year's message. New Year's fell on, on, uh, on Sunday. And uh, this was that message. And it was Christ my, or more Christ in 2023. And, uh, and this will kind of be a continuation of that. Part two, more specifically, faith. More of Christ in 23, and I want to focus in on faith today. Y'all go to the Lord with me. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Father, for this opportunity to, to, to come here today. Lord, you know, on the way up here, I was whining and crying, and I'm sure you were just <laughs> shaking your head, rolling your eyes if you do such a thing. But God, you're so faithful you're so faithful to infuse us with an extra measure of your spirit to, to uh, just invigorate us, to get excited about, about your word. It wasn't that I was less excited about it. It was just this, this old flesh. The spirit in me was excited. It was the flesh that was dragging me down. And I thank you, Lord, that, that uh, the, flesh, the flesh was put down, the spirit rose up, or the spirit rose up and the flesh got put down. Either way, I thank you, Lord, that... Uh, that the man who was driving up here and the man who's standing here today is sure grateful for you, Lord. God, you're so good. You're so good in every situation. And Father, now I pray that you just prepare our hearts to receive the seed of the word that's being chunked out today. It's my job to chunk that seed, Lord. I pray that it fall on good ground in our heart that you have gone ahead and prepared for us. God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that this seed, that you bring it back to our remembrance so that we can walk it, so that we can live it, so that we can do it, so that we can teach it. And when we're able to teach it, that's after we've harvested what, came, what started as a seed. I thank you, Lord, that, that uh, we chew on this. We chew on this seed today, Father. Help me, Lord. Lead me, guide me, direct me. Help me not to mess it up. Help me, Lord, to be led by you. In Jesus' name, amen. When I, uh, I put my notes together uh, last night and today, and April said, really? <laughs> That's what you're going with? I said, yeah. She said, you seriously going with that? I said, there's good stuff on there. And I said, I got all the rest of it up here. And uh, yeah, that's what she, mm, oh, Lord. So I'm sure she's praying for y'all. She's praying for y'all right now. Matthew 16, 24, it's kind of where we were. That was the, that was the text of the, of the heart of the message that was uh, a week ago Sunday, which was more Christ in 23. And it was the heart of the, of the text. This is, what, this is what Jesus has laid on me for 2023. This is where he wants me to be in 2023. This is where he wants you to be in 2023. You know, we were talking about uh, New Year's Day. You know, it was really just one day removed from 2022. It was a continuation of a thing that God's already done. You can say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start fresh Right here today, it's a brand new year, a brand new me. I'm going to start fresh right here today. Well, guess what you could do on January the 11th on a Wednesday night 
at 7.02 p.m. You can make a decision that it's a brand new me, it's a brand new year. And, uh, and I'm going to be everything that God wants for me to be this year in 23. How many of you, some of you can say, man, you thoroughly enjoyed 2022. Some did. Some had a good year in 2022. Uh, some not so good a year in 2022. But, you know, every one of us did these three things. We either, we either went through trials in 22, we came out of trials in 22, or we were in the middle of a trial in 22. Guess what you're going to do in 23? <laughs> you're going to be in a trial in 23, or you're going to be coming out of a trial in 23, or you're going to be waiting to go into a trial in 23. You're going to need this. You're going to need the foundation that, that, uh, that, that I'm going to share with you today. And if you missed last week, a week before last week, we didn't record last week, did you? David Shepherd, go back and listen to Christ Moss in 23, and uh, and that'll get you that'll get you where I feel like we need to be as a body. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Jesus said to his disciples, "How do you know Jesus is speaking?" It's red. This group right here is wound up. This group over here. How do you know Jesus is speaking? <laughs> Okay, all five of you. Because it's in red. So if it's in red, can you trust it? Yeah, you can trust it. How come? Jesus said it. If Jesus said it, I love that little magnet. I've got it somewhere, I think, hanging on our refrigerator. If Jesus said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Jesus said it, so that settles it. <laughs> we just need to believe it. We just need to believe it. We heard some good testimonies a Wednesday a week ago, and it was about having faith and believe. Have faith and believe. Then Jesus said to his disciples, are we disciples of the Lord? We are. We are disciples. If you're not, I want you to come see me right after church today, and I want to talk to you about what it is to be a disciple or, said another way, a follower of Jesus Christ. How many are a follower of Jesus Christ? Man. We are. We are. How many of you got it all right? You're a great follower. You never mess up, ever. Let me see your hand. G one, Jennifer Young. Jennifer, Y-O-U-N-G. Jim? <laughs> uh, none of us. And she threw it up real quick and smiled. None of us. We don't. We all mess up. Don't none of us get it right. But that don't mean we stop trying. That don't mean we give up and quit. That means that we, uh, we keep on going. We keep on moving forward. Jesus is speaking to us. If we're, <laughs> some of us are guilty. So Jesus said this to his disciples. Disciples are also called followers. Followers. So if you're following, where is your position in regard to Jesus? Are you behind him? How many, won't, how many do this? If Jesus is standing right here, and we're behind him, and he ain't doing things as fast as we think he needs to be doing. We just, come on, right, right, right. here's what I want you to do, Lord. I want you to do it just this way. I want you to do it exactly like this, and this is how I want it. You got it? All right, let's do it. Oh, Lord, where are you, Lord? Lord, I'm in a mess. Uh -huh. Oh, there you are, Jesus. I'm sorry I messed up. I'm going to follow you. You lead me where you want me to go, Lord, and I'll be patient. Isn't that what we do? We laugh, but don't we do the same thing? I do. I do all the time. You know, we were just talking, me and the kitchen team, so we used a, a kitchen analogy. We want a microwave answer to our prayer, but we serve a crockpot God. And it's going to be slow roasted, but I'm telling you, whenever it's ready, it is going to be tender, it is going to be juicy, and it is going to be perfect. Microwave gets real hot right in the center and burns the edges. Crockpot, juicy and ready. I'd rather have a crockpot roast than a microwave roast with some of that gravy. Ooh, throw some carrots and taters off in there, boy. <laughs> Put that on some bread, eat that for dessert. Yeah. Yeah, sop it up. That's what we want. That's what we say we want. And when it comes to food, it is. But when it comes to your spiritual walk, that's not what we want. I want it now, like that commercial. It's my money, and I want it now. That's the way we do it. 
God, why ain't you answering my prayer? Why ain't you doing it the way I want you to do it, Lord? Because it's his way. It's about him. If we're following, if we're disciples of Jesus Christ, are we following him? Yes. Jesus said to his disciples, so is who's he speaking to? Just them, just the 12? Or is he speaking to us? Us. He did say it to the 12, but he's speaking to us. He's speaking to followers of him. Followers of the way. If any of you, if any of, does that exclude anyone? No. It includes everyone. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. And follow me. That's where he has me in 2023. I want to give up my way. I want to pick up his way. When it says pick up your cross, that means you make him. And we quoted Charles Stanley last, Dr. Charles Stanley last week, and that is making Jesus Christ the core of everything you do, the core of your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. When we get to the point where we are making Jesus the center and the core of our heart, then we are doing what it is to take up our cross and to follow him. But we can't take up our cross and follow him without doing the first part, which is give up my own way. Give up this, Jesus. You Don't go far. I need you. I know I'm going to need you pretty quick. So don't go far. But I got this right now. I'm in a good place. I'm in a good spot. Man, I wasn't going to go here, but I am. <laughs> I want to give you an example. Uh, I was, a while ago, uh, my, my, my pastor Jason came to my mind. I shot him a quick message and just to let him know I had him on my mind. I was praying for him and Christy and the family. And, <laughs> and I remembered, hey, how many of you have ever, some of you have said it, some of you have just thought it, but you're like, all right, Lord, I got this. I got this. You got me out of this trial. Thank you, Jesus. I see where we're going. I got this. How many of you ever done that? If you're honest enough, only men. Now, I see some women in there too. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of us have done it. I got this, Lord. Jason. Jason had been, uh, been uh, uh, Jason and Christy, they, they ain't been married a, a whole long time. They had, they had, uh, they had Tara. I, I, I think they might have had Ricky Lee. And uh, already by now, but they were little. And uh, so he had been praying for increase. He was working on a job in construction. And uh, so he was, he was, uh, he'd been making, making a, a little bit of ends meet, but not, not a whole lot. So he had this, uh, this idea that him and Christy would get up early in the morning and they'd start making breakfast tacos. So they started making breakfast tacos and they're praying for increase. And they're praying, Lord, I need an increase. I need you. Lord, just to show us what it is that we need to do to bring in income so that we can be a blessing uh, and be blessed. And they had this idea, breakfast tacos. So they started making breakfast tacos and taking them to work in, a, in an igloo ice chest. And, man, it was a dollar a pop, and they were selling them like hotcakes. And, uh, man, they done made some money, but he wasn't making enough money fast enough. So they, they even confessed. They believed the idea the whole thing came from the Lord. Jason may take credit for the idea, but it came from the Lord. And uh, so here they were making a little bit of money, but they weren't making it fast enough. And Jason says, I got this. Even admitted, whenever he told, told us the story, he even admitted he told the Lord, I got this. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever just said, you know what, Jesus, I got it from here. But he did. So he thought, you know, I got this idea. I know how we can take this little bit of money that Jesus provided for, provided a way for, I'm going to take it. I'm going to buy a bunch of fencing material. And, and he did. He bought corner posts, T-posts, wire. He bought stays. He bought, clip, he bought clips. He bought everything he needed. He had it on a trailer, loaded up. And he's like, I'm fixing to go. And he blew all that extra money on all this fencing because he could double his money with one job. And he got that one job. He's on his way to that one job, and he passes by the bank. And as he passes by the bank, he sees some, some uh, young ladies that they went to they went to school with, and, uh, and Jay, uh, the younger Jay, they called him JT. He was a bit of a showboat. JT grew into Jay. Jason and Jay, same person. JT, little Jason. And uh, so he saw them, and he thought, you know what? 
I'm going to show off. So he whipped his truck and trailer around, and he's going to pass through the, the, the posts by the teller. He's going to blow right past them. He's going to give them a little toot-toot and do like that slow roll like this. <laughs> so he did. He comes around the bank, gives a little toot-toot, and he's doing like this. He made it through. The trailer did not. <laughs> Boom! He hit both columns on both sides with the trailer of each side. How cool was he looking then? <laughs> it went, all he could hear was wah, 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 so that ain't good. So be careful when you say, you know what, Lord? I got this. But we do it all the time. We do it all the time without even telling God, I got this. When we start taking control of our own lives, we're telling the Lord, I've got this. That's where we do not give up our own way. We kind of take up his cross, but we ain't really following him. I'm guilty. I did that all 22, off and on, off and on. Didn't go so well. Didn't go so well to the point that here I am in 23 saying, I want to be this, Lord. Help me to do this. Show me areas of opportunity where I can deny myself, take up my cross, which is make Jesus the center and the core of everything that I do, take up my cross, and then I'll be following him. Second scripture. I want to, I want to before we get there, if you're going to take up your cross and follow him, you got to have two things. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. If you're going to deny your own way who you've seen and you trust, it's kind of, I kind of trust me sometimes. It don't always go well. I, I, uh, anyway. So if I'm going to give up my way in the way I think is right, then I have to give it up because I trust the Father. I trust that God's way is better than my way. And you are looking at me with your head cocked, but how many of you give all your decisions to the Lord? None of us. None of us. We don't give up all of our own way. We give up some of our way. And then we take up our cross and we follow him. The second thing is you got to have faith. You got to have faith in the one that you you can't see. You can't see. You put your faith in the one that you can't see. You put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You put yourself down. You take up him and you walk according to his ways. You got to have faith. Uh, a very a very common scripture Hebrews 11:6 Do y'all know without faith it is impossible impossible to please God So if we're expected to to put down ourselves lay down ourselves pick up our cross and follow him we got to have faith If we're not doing that it's because we don't trust him It's because we don't have enough faith in his ability to lead us or in my case he's too doggone slow about telling me what I want to hear or answering my prayer. Any of y'all there? That's about the point right there where I say, you know what? I think I know the direction he's going to go. I feel like I know the direction he wants me to go. I said, I'll just get out there and do it. Next thing you know, I'm in a jam, and I'm right back begging, Lord, I'm sorry. I knew I shouldn't have done that, and I did it anyway. Please forgive me, Lord. Lead me, guide me, help me to follow you. We got to have faith. We got to have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you're going to have faith, then we've got to be doing exactly what, uh, exactly what Matthew 16, 24 said. We've got to pick up our cross, and we've got to follow him. Anyone who, come, who wants to come to him must believe that God exists, must believe that he exists. We don't have a problem with that. And that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. If you are sincerely seeking him, then you are taking up your cross and you are following him. If you are sincerely seeking him, then you're taking up your cross and you're following him. We have to believe that God exists and that he rewards those who diligently or sincerely seek him. Romans ten seventeen. So faith, uh, a couple of things that, that uh, here... One, Romans 10, 17 is another common text. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you want more faith, you do what? Read. Read. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's a familiar text. 
I don't know how many that, that I've, I've visited with, counseled with, prayed with, uh, that they talk about their relationship with the Lord is strained or non-existent at all anymore. And one of the first questions I ask them is one of the first questions that Jason always asked when I helped him counsel, and that is, how much are you reading your word? I'm struggling in my faith, preacher. Man, I just ain't strong like I used to be. How much are you reading your word? Not near enough. Or not at all. Or I just don't have time. Well, you're praying for something, looking for a withdrawal where you haven't made a sufficient deposit. You can't go to the bank and say, give me 100 out of my checking account. You ain't putting nothing in. It's the same thing. If you want more faith, if you want to get faith out of it, you got to take the time to dig it out. That was a whole message about three or four or five or six ago. You got to get in there and dig out that word. You got to get in there for yourself and to dig it out. And I want to show you what you do with that word. And then, uh, and then I'll, I'll get ready to, all right, we ain't closing. Let's look, at, uh, let's look at Luke 17. And the apostles, so, so many come up and they say, give us, help me have more faith. And I point them right to the word. Point them right to the word. Um, I can't remember the scripture, uh, but it, it, oh man, it'll come to me here later. But it talked about how the word is a seed. The word is a seed, and that seed is planted. That word is a seed, and it produces fruit. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. I love Jesus' response. He said, so the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed. We've heard it preached a bunch of times, and I still will. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed. But how about this? If you have faith as a mustard seed, what do you do with the seed? Plant it. Plant it. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the root and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. I want to focus right on that first part. If you have faith as a mustard seed, so we get in there and we read the word. Man, I visited with one lady one time. It was uh, early, in my, early in my ministry. Um, and I guess it was probably, oh man, mm, 13 years ago. And it was at Cowboy Church. And this lady was up. And, and uh, man, nobody was going over there to her. And I thought, man, ain't nobody going to go pray with this woman. I felt bad for her. So I was praying with someone else well i went over there and i i knelt down and and uh first thing we talked about was that she said you know i i just i just don't feel like i have much i just don't feel like I, my faith is where it needs to be i'm just struggling in my faith she told me two things the first thing was i'm struggling in my faith and i said how much are you reading the word and she said well since i got out of prison uh i read my word about four hours a day I said, every day? She said, seven days a week. I'm like, well, that ain't the reason. <laughs> well, scratch off how much you read in your word. Ain't near enough. That four hours a day. I felt, I felt convicted. <laughs> like, wow. And uh, well, anyway, so I said, well, that ain't it. I said, are you doing it? Huh? Are you doing it? Are you doing the word? Are you just reading the word? Are you doing it? Are you applying it? Are you planting it? What are you doing with it? Second thing she told me was we got around to while she was in prison. She was in prison for murdering her husband. <laughs> I said, recently? I did. I said, recently? She said, <laughs> she said, no, sir. It was a long time ago. She said, I did my time. And, uh, but I, that's the key. Man, this lady was reading four hours a day, seven days a week. She was reading 28 hours of the Word a week and was struggling in her faith. She wasn't doing it. She, wasn't, she had faith, didn't she? She had faith. If faith, uh, if faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God, she had faith. But what the disciple says, show us how to increase our faith. Show us how to increase that. When you have that faith and you want your faith increased, you do what you would do with a seed. You plant it. You plant it. And you start believing. 
you start confessing that seed. You start confessing that word. You start confessing in faith. You start trusting God with some stuff. You start, uh, so if you need increase, you get in God's word and you find out what he says about your money and you follow his word regarding tithes and offerings. And then you've sown that seed and you expect an increase because Jesus said later on, he said, if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any parable, meaning that the, the law of sowing and reaping is the principal peril, parable of all parables that Jesus told. You will reap what you sow. So many of us have seed, but we don't sow it. We know the word, but we don't apply it. It's for somebody else. No, it's for us. It's for us. It's for me. What situation are you going through? What are you believing God for? Find in that word a seed that applies to that and sow it. How many of you like squash? Bold squash. Fried squash. Heck yeah, my kind of people right here. 20 hands went up on squash. 18 hands went down on bold. 18 more came up on fried. Back to 20. Sliced thin, dipped in yellow meal with a plate of ketchup. Wait for that first batch to come off. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Ranch. Oh, man, that's my crack right there. Woo. Yeah, don't even plan on getting none of the first batch. That's mine. Man, that's good stuff. Woo. How do we get on that? I don't know. So if you like squash, then don't plant turnip greens. Or if you like squash and you've got squash seed, man, you could like squash. You could hope for squash. You could wish you had squash. And you have all the potential for that squash right here in your hand in that bag. Right there in your hand is that bag of seed. And you could get you all the squash that you could possibly want. But all you got to do is open the bag, get the seed, and plant it. And if you'll do that, you'll reap squash. It won't be automatically. I love this. I've told this story a bunch, but I still love it. I, I, I remind myself of these things sometimes. How many of you grew a garden ever in your life? And you put your little rose right there. You know, I could usually tell where somebody's got tomatoes planted because they got one of those uh, wire rack things stuck right there, so I know they expect tomatoes to come up and go around. That's so why I probably picked that out. But all the other rows, um, we used to, y'all, how many of you put the little stick at the end of your row? And did you write on it what was coming up? My dad used to take the bag that he got the seed out of, and he stuck it on that stick. And that way he could see the picture of what it was that, it was, that, that, that was planted there. That's faith. So the seed is planted. I don't see it produced yet. I don't see anything breaking the ground. But I know what I'm believing for because I can see that stick. I can see that right there. I can see what it is that I'm believing for right here every time that I read that word. If you have that, if this is, bears witness with you and you have a situation, find out the word, what the word says about that situation Put it on a posty note and put it in your bathroom or put it in your kitchen window. Put it somewhere that you'll see it in your truck, car, SUV, wherever you'll see it every day. And you may not see the evidence of the fruit that's happening in your life, but you know the seeds that you've planted. And you see just like that picture on that stick. Every time you look at that posty note with that scripture, you see it. You see it and you believe it. And you know eventually it's got to break ground. And when you, so, uh, so the seed's been sown and do you have to do anything else? What do you put on that seed? What do you put on that ground? Water. So how do you water the seed? Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that, uh, that your word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. God, I praise you and I thank you for that word. I thank you that that word manifests in my life until the point that I can believe it and I know that I can do this, I can complete this task that my boss has given me to do that just, I'm just not sure. I just can't do it without you, Lord. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So, Lord, I thank you and praise you. Now you've just watered that seed. And when the enemy comes in and says, oh, you're going to fail, your presentation is going to flop, or 
you're going you're going you you are going to break this horse for this uh for this client and as soon as you get it to them it's going to buck them straight off they oh, it ain't going to be good at all so every time those negative thoughts come in your head you bind that up rebuke that and say father i thank you that i can do all things through christ who strengthens me i thank you that your word is true i thank you that that word applies to me I receive that word. I stand on that word. And I thank you, Father, that I'm living that word. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Now you just watered it again. You keep doing that to the point that the devil just going to leave you alone about that. Because he knows he can't break through that shell of, I know what the word says. I confess it. I believe it. And I'm standing on it. And then all of a sudden you see it manifest in your life. Now you're walking in courage and confidence and where you were walking like this, defeated, now all of a sudden you're walking like this because you know you got victory. Somebody raises like to ask a question and you high five them, pow, because you got courage and confidence, not in the ability that you have, but that fact that you could do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I put my, all my glory, my honor, my praise toward him because he's worthy. That's how you do it. You can have the word and get faith. But if you want faith to increase in your life, you got to trust him. You got to deny yourself, not just deny yourself something. I loved when Charles Stanley said that. He said, oh, we deny ourselves something all the time. I'm not going to have this cake. Oh, I'm eating keto, so I'm going to pass that by. Keto? Shoot, I'm eating steako. And uh, so you can, I'm eating ribo. Ooh, yeah. So you can deny your, not deny yourself something. Deny yourself meaning I come second. I'm putting Christ first. The core and the center of everything. When we're doing that, we are walking in faith. And then we start to follow him. Man, we spent five weeks before Christmas on what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And that is to do what he says to do. When we are doing what it is that he tells us to do, we are following Jesus. He didn't just following him, and he never says nothing, ever, ever. I don't know what Jesus you're following, but he's prompting me to do things all the time. Give them five bucks. What? Give them five. They'll buy crack with it. Give them five. They're drunk. Give them five. Fine. Let me pray with you. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is. Sometimes it's just a, man, God bless you. I was praying for you today. Ma'am, is there anything I can do for you, sir? Whatever it is, serve. Whatever it is that Christ lays on your heart to do, when you do it, you're following him. You're denying yourself. You're picking up your cross, and you're following him. And you're following him. So I pray that that, that same thing come alive in you in 2023 that you come to the point that we deny ourselves we pick up our cross and we follow him we get in that word get in that word then we have faith we apply that faith and now we've increased our faith and we're followers of jesus christ that's all he wants from us that's all he wants from us he wants us to trust and obey there's probably a whole nother message about the Israelites and what happened to them when they didn't trust God. Hmm. They're getting ready to start uh, a series in round pen. I think uh, pretty quick it's going to be in the book of Hebrews. Starts when? February the 5th. It's going to be in the book of Hebrews. And and the book of Hebrews, I can't remember exactly what chapter, but it talks about the Kadesh Barnea group, which is the group of Israelites. It was that generation, that group that did not put their trust in in the Lord, in the Lord God. Well, y'all know the story. He told them, turn around and go back to the desert. Man, I don't want that. Man, I don't come from there. Living the rest of their life in what could have been. They saw it, church. They got to see the grapes that came back from the spies that went in, the size of basketballs. Small ones were the size of footballs, the Bible says. Yeah, right L. They got to see the fruit of what it was. 
But instead of focusing on the fruit, they focused on the giants. They put their trust, uh, they put their confidence not in God. They put their trust someplace else, displaced their trust, and they missed their blessing. They missed what God had promised for them. Oh, man, it's going to be good. So I, I know uh, I know Bo and them and, and several have spent a ton of time studying and getting ready for this. So February the 5th, y'all plan on being in Round Pen. I told Bo, I said, I'm going to start going to Round Pen. He told me, we don't need you in there. <laughs> I asked somebody else. I said, how come Bo don't need me in there? He said, because he talks trash about it. No, he's <laughs> one time. And he even came to me and said, hey, I was talking trash about you today, preacher. I hope you don't mind. I said, what'd you say? So he told me, I said, yeah, it's true. No, it wasn't. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for, for coming together today. And I thank you, Father, that how all this just ties together. It is about following you. This easily uh, could, 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 have been, could have been a part seven. God, we just thank you and we praise you for that, Lord. That's where I want to be. I want to be continue in the way where I deny myself. I continue every day. It says daily, daily. You pick up your cross and follow me daily, every day. It's not a one and done, uh, as in the point uh, one one time that you received Christ as your Savior. It's not just about that event in your life where you did that. It's about every day. It's about me every day making you the center and the core of everything that I do and to see and, and trusting you and obeying you and following you and getting in your word and growing in my faith toward you and then doing it, applying it planting that seed, watering that seed, growing in my faith, and following you, Jesus. That's what it's all about every day. And so, Father, I pray that you help us not to forget this. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you bring it back to our remembrance. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a great week.